Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial. If you were given an IP address along with its subnet mask, could you determine the subnet number that that IP address belongs to? Well, this is a very common challenge that pops up on the job and it also pops up in the certification tracks. So this is something you're going to have to be able to answer. And that's what we're going to focus on here, how to find the subnet number when you're given an IP address and the subnet mask. Now, like all things with IP addressing, it's a relatively simple process to figure out the answer. You just have to memorize a few things and then go ahead and practice it a bunch. All right, so with that said, let's take our first example. And this is going to be an easy one because we're not going to be performing any subnetting. In other words, here's our IP address, 10.0.20.5, and it has not been subnetted. So we know that this is a class A network IP address. So we give it the default class A subnet mask, 255.0.0.0. So far, so good. And so what we do here is by lining the IP address up, and then putting the subnet mask below it, we're going to go through a very simple process of comparison. And we start with the first octet of both the subnet mask and the IP address. And all we're going to do is ask ourselves a question. If the subnet mask has a value of 255, we copy the value of the octet in the IP address. So the first, first octet is 255, the first octet here is 10, so all we do is we copy the 10 and we're done with that octet. And then we move on. Now, if the octet in the subnet mask does not equal 255, and in fact, if it equals zero, we ignore the octet in the IP address and we just write a zero. And then we're done with the octet. And we move on to the next one. So here, again, we see another zero in the third octet of the subnet mask. We look up here and we know we have to ignore that because it's a zero, we write down a zero, and we move on, and it's the same thing for this fourth octet, zero, so we just write down a zero. And that's it, that is our subnet number, 10.0.0.0. Pretty simple, right? Well, let's look at another example where subnetting is used. Okay, so here we have a class B IP address, 172.200.10.5, and this is what our subnet mask looks like, 255.255.255.0. So we know this has been subnetted because that is not your default class B subnet mask. So we're going to do the same thing here, process of comparison. And we're going to ask ourselves the same questions as we did in the first example. For every octet in the subnet mask that equals 255, we copy the value of the corresponding octet in the IP address. So we begin with octet 1. Does it equal 255? Yes. The value of the IP address for octet 1 is 172. So we just copy 172 and we're done with that octet. And we move on. So obviously, again, here we've got the same thing, so we're going to copy 200, and we're done. The third octet, 255, so yes, we want to copy the IP address value for that octet, and we're done. And then at the end here, it's a zero, and just like the last example, if it equals zero, we ignore what we see in the IP address, and we just write a zero. And so this is our subnet number, 172. Dot two hundred dot ten dot zero. So this was pretty simple as well. Even though we subnetted, the subnet mask was very straightforward, just two fifty fives and zeros. Well let's look at one more example where subnetting is also used, but it's going to be a little bit trickier because we're not going to have such an easy subnet mask to work with. Here we have one ninety two, one sixty eight 20.73. And now let's take a look at our subnet mask. 255.255.255.240. Uh-oh, what are we going to do? 
We have 255s. We know how to treat those, but we don't have any zeros, and instead we have a 240. Well, yes, that is what makes this example a little bit more difficult because we're using a different subnet mask that does not have any zeros in it. So let's jump into this and figure out what we have to do. Well, some things remain the same, like the first two examples, where if we have a 255, all we do is copy the value of the same octet in the IP address. So here, we're going to start off, just like last time, 192, and we're done with the octet. And then we move on to the second one, and it's going to be the same thing. We copy 168, and the same thing in the third octet. So we copy the 20. Now we're at the challenging one, 240. What do we do with this? Well, as you can probably guess, there's a special formula for this. What we do is we take 256 and we subtract from that whatever the interesting octet looks like in the subnet mask. Now, I'm calling it interesting because it's not 255 and it's not zero. And those were the ones we were uh, working with so far. and We know what to do with those automatically. So we subtract it, and we get an answer of 16. Now, this is a special number. It's going to help us determine what this last octet value will be. And here's how it works. In the IP address, we have the value of 73 in the fourth octet. So that's an IP address, and we need to find the subnet number, right? Well, the subnet number has to be either less than that or equal to it. It can't actually be more than it, right? Because an IP address uh, has to fall within the, uh, the, the subnet number. So we take our 16 and we keep adding 16 to itself until we get as close as we can to 73 without exceeding it, though. So for example, we start with 16. Now, can we get any closer to 73? Well, yeah, we can. So we add 16 to itself to get 32. Well, that's better, but is there is there some more room, you think, that we can get closer? Well, yeah, I mean, simple addition and subtraction can tell us that. So we add 16 again, and now we get 48. Getting better, but let's keep on going. So... We add 16 again, and we get 64. Now that looks like a winner, because if we add 16 again to 64, we end up with 80, and we've exceeded 73. So 80 is no good, 48 is too low, 64 is our number, and we take that and we put that into our fourth octet. And now that is our subnet number, 192.168.20.64. Okay, so again, to, to summarize this, if you have an octet which is not 255 or 0, whatever the value is, subtract it from 256, and then that number is going to be your multiple, and you keep just adding it to itself until you get as close as you can to your fourth octet IP address value without exceeding it. And there we go. All right, well, to summarize what we covered, when you're looking at a subnet mask, for every octet that has a value of 255, all you're going to do is copy the value of the IP address octet that corresponds to it. And then likewise, for every octet in a subnet mask which has a value of zero, we ignore the IP address octet value and we just write a zero. And we saw how that was pretty easy to figure out um, an IP address and its subnet number when there was no subnetting done or when you had a very simple subnet mask of all 255s or zeros. Now, when it gets a little more difficult, in other words, when you have a subnet mask that does not have a zero in it, and we looked at one that had dot .240 in it, well, then you have to use the formula. 256 minus that value, and then that gives you uh, your special number. And you keep adding the special number to itself until you get as close as you can to the last octet value 
of your IP address without exceeding it. And then that becomes your subnet number. Okay, so practice these a few times and you'll get it in no time. And that's it. Thanks for watching.